Hi guys! In this video, we'll be focusing on the free body diagram of forces and inclined plane and pulleys. Okay, so our focus first is the inclined plane and then let's have the pulley. Okay, just a short um, definition of inclined plane. So these are elevated platforms that is angled on one end. Okay, that enables us to move our object easier and faster. Okay, it would be easier for you to slide this load rather than lifting this. Diba? It, even during the ancient time, of course, they were doing this so that their work will be easier and faster. Now, let's have the free body diagram of inclined plane. I have here two so that you can have the idea that you can actually rotate this. Okay? So, here is the inclined plane. So, if we have this object with mass equal to m, then it will have its weight, of course. So, the weight is directed downward. This will be the weight. And then, remember that the normal force will always be perpendicular to the surface. So, we say that this is the normal force. Okay? It should actually be attached to this. But anyway, so, there's the normal force. Okay? So, let's label this Fn. And this one is the weight. As you can see, um, they're not equal. So, we can extract here the components of the weight. So, we'll be drawing here or illustrating here. Okay. This component and the value of this theta will be equal to this theta. Okay. And so, this will be the adjacent side. So, if it's the adjacent side, we use mg cosine of theta right we'll be using w sub x so that will be mg cosine of theta and then this side will be the opposite side right so that will be our w sub y this opposite to this um theta so that will be mg sine of theta that's how you solve the y component okay but then let we will move it here so that it will be attached to this origin and so the forces are attached with common and a common point so we'll be moving that here mg sine of theta okay and here okay same in value so that will be there. so basically this is the free body diagram of the inclined plane Okay, I have here this one. If, for example, it will be difficult for you to like to look into that because it's inclined. Of course, you can move this so that at least you can imagine this in a flat surface. But if you have here, of course, the flat surface, now the normal force is obviously perpendicular to the surface. Okay, this is the normal force. And now the weight. It will also rotate that way. So, this one will be the weight of the object, which is M. Okay. We can draw the components. So, again, this is still the angle and adjacent side of the angle. That's Mg cosine of theta. Okay. And then, the Y component or the opposite side will be the Mg sine of theta. See? That's how you draw that. I rotated this way so that it will be easy for you to imagine this if we have, um, of course, this gradation plane. You have the y-axis and the x-axis there. Okay, but same thing, you can work on this. Okay? Okay, so here again, let's try to draw it again so that it will be familiarized. So, again, the weight of the object is directed downward, so we can draw its components. So, this will be the theta, and this is the adjacent side, mg cosine theta. And that's, this will be the opposite side, so that's mg sine of theta. Okay? And then, drawing here the normal force, okay, perpendicular to the surface, this f sub n. Okay, with that, you can see or you can observe that now the normal force is not equal to the weight. Okay, unlike in, what's that, in flat surface, remember that normal force is equal to the weight. They're equal, but here, they're not equal. Normal force here is equal to 
the x component of the weight. So that will be normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta. So if you will be solving for the value of the normal force acting here, this is the normal force, mg cosine of theta. But the weight will still be the same. That's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so now if, for example, there will be a frictional force acting here. So here, if there will be a frictional force acting in this way, you'll still have the same formula for frictional force, F. Okay, small f is equal to the mu or the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force, right? So, here, let's just substitute the value or the equation for the normal force. So, your frictional force will be equal to the mu, the coefficient of friction, multiplied by mg cosine of theta. So, if you're asked to solve for um, the frictional force here, so you'll be using this one, okay? Whether it's a static or kinetic friction, okay? So, let's see the next one. But it's the same. So there, okay. Now let's try if we'll be solving um, the acceleration of the object here. If there's no friction and if there's friction. Now let's take this as an example. Um, so we can calculate the acceleration of the object here. If, say for example, it will be frictionless. Okay, so it's frictionless. Okay, if it's frictionless, then of course there's no other forces acting here. We can say that um, it will, if we will see this, if we look into this, and that it's inclined, of course, you'll have it this way. Okay, so this will be your y axis. Okay, the normal force in the mg cosine theta. And then this will be your x axis, the slope of the plane. Okay, so let's now have here first the summation of forces along. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, we have here the summation of forces along the y-axis first. So the summation of forces along the y-axis will be equal to the forces on the y-axis. Of course, this is the normal force and then we have the mg cosine theta but they're acting in opposite direction so we will have your fn minus mg cosine theta but we know that they are equal just opposite in direction so we can say that the summation of forces along the y will also be zero okay and then the summation of forces along the x summation of forces along the x now will be, okay, let's underline this first, okay, will be the forces on the x-axis, and you can only see that you only have this one, mg sine of theta, okay, so that's it, mg sine of theta, because there's no, of course, there's no other forces acting on this, unless it is pushed upward, or it is pushed um, on the, the other way around. Okay, so here you have the summation of forces along the x. So let's now have the acceleration. So for you to solve the acceleration of the object, of course, the second law of motion states that the summation of forces over mass is equal to the acceleration. But as you can see, we only have the force along the x-axis, so we can have your f sub x. Okay, and then substituting here the value of that, that will be mg sine of theta over m so now that's the acceleration if you want to like um, simplify this then it's fine you can divide this by m because they're equal to one then that's it okay this is for again frictionless and no other force is acting in this okay let's have one with frictional force but of course um you may also be asked to find the final velocity um the the time it takes for it to fall down okay given the length of that okay it can also be asked for the distance it covers okay given the other variables you just you just need to recall of course kinematic equation okay so let's have another one with friction now here we're using the same one but 
will include frictional force, of course. Let's use red. Okay. So, if this object will be moving this way, okay, it will be sliding towards this direction, okay. So, the frictional force will be acting opposite that. So, this will be your F sub K. Okay, can you see the free body diagram? Okay, so again, um, let's see the forces on this. So, we'll have the summation of forces along the y-axis. It's still the same. They are equal in value but opposite in direction, F and E. Minus mg cosine of theta. They're equal, so that will be equal to zero. Summation of forces along y is zero. Now, the summation of forces along x will now be equal to this two. But they're acting in opposite direction, so we'll have um, two vectors in opposite direction. So, use subtraction. So, we'll have here mg sine of theta minus fk. Okay? So... And then, of course, there will be value to that. So, it will not be zero. So, again, this one and then this one. Now, let's have the acceleration. So, for the acceleration, again, this is the summation of forces over mass. So, let's just substitute here. Y is zero. So, we only have the summation of forces along the X. So, that will be mg sine of theta minus f or frictional force over m okay knowing that the force the summation i mean the formula for kinetic friction is mu times the normal force we can have this one here okay oops that will be mg sine of theta minus let's just have here the value that's mu sub k of multiplied by mg cosine theta. Remember that this is the formula of your frictional force in an inclined plane. Okay, over m. Okay. Then if we will be substituting this, of course, we can cancel out m here. So a will now be equal to g sine of theta minus mu g cosine Oops, cosine of theta. Because you can simplify it this way. Okay, the other one here, we can simplify this as well. Okay. If you're going to see that A will be equal to G sine of theta. As you can see, we can eliminate the value of the mass. This means that the acceleration of the object in an inclined plane is dependent on the angle theta and not on the mass of the object okay so there okay i hope that's clear um on the other video i'll be solving several problems involving um this okay but now let's